Well, in today's first reading from the book of Samuel, uh, what you heard this morning was a part of the story between Saul and David. You know, Saul was the first king anointed, and uh, he disobeyed the Lord, but he's still king. David was anointed the next king, but Saul was still reigning at the time, and Saul became very jealous of David and tried a number of times to kill David. So here we have a situation where Saul is in camp with his army around him, and David knows this. And so David sneaks into the camp of Saul at night, gets up to the cot on which Saul is sleeping, takes Saul's very spear that's, that's sitting there next to Saul, and looks down on Saul. And if he had wanted to, he could exact revenge on Saul right then and there, and revenge for all the times Saul had tried to kill him. But he does not do it. He follows the warning he got from the high priest, who said, you know, he may have earned a fall from God, but he's still the anointed king. So David chooses not to exact revenge, takes the sword and Saul's water jug, and sneaks back out of camp. Then the next morning, when the sun comes up, and Saul's on the opposite hill across the valley, he shouts across the valley. And he wants all the soldiers of Saul to know that they're lousy soldiers because they're not protecting their king. They let him, David, sneak into the camp. And to prove it, he holds up the spear and the water jug of, the Saul, of, of Saul. He has a chance to exact revenge. He chooses not to. Jesus talks about the same thing here in the Gospel of Luke. He talks about um, praying for those who hate you. He's talking about loving your enemies. He's talking about doing good to those who do bad to you. They're quite amazing words, and I guess, um, in theory, they're easy to understand. But in practice, they're very, very difficult to follow. Because when you are abused, when you are betrayed, when you are mistreated, it's very, very, very hard to turn the other cheek. It's very, very hard to do good for that person. It's very, very hard to be forgiving. It's not easy. It's one of the most difficult things a person can do. So how do we take these words of Jesus and how do we apply them practically in our lives? Well, let me recommend to you a movie. It was also a book. It was called The Shack. Anybody here ever read The Shack or seen the movie? Oh, very good. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. It's about a man whose daughter was kidnapped. And he fears that his daughter has been killed. He's going to find out that, in fact, that has happened. But his daughter has disappeared. And so he keeps driving out to this place, this campsite where, he had, where she had disappeared to. And he's searching for her and comes upon a shack. And he walks into the shack, and what he doesn't realize is he's walked into heaven. And there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God appears to him in all different uh, persons of the Lord. And then there's a part in the movie that will, if you've never seen it, have plenty of tissue because you will cry. Even the toughest guys I know have seen this and they have cried. It's a conversation that he has. He's now been informed that his daughter was in fact murdered. And what God is asking him to do is forgive the person who murdered his girl. Wow. And you can see the pain, and you can see the struggle, and you can see the agony in this father that he's going through. But what God is trying to tell this man is that forgiving the murderer doesn't do anything for the murderer. It's not even about the murder. But only by coming up with some method of forgiving are you going to be able to not fall into despair. 
not to fall into hate. For you to have any kind of a life left to you on this earth, you have to have some type of forgiveness in you. And this is um, a tough thing to do. It's a very tough scene to watch. But as God explains to this man, and as I heard in a very good homily 35 years ago, well, more than that, almost 40, well, a long time ago, when I was in seminary with Father Cyprian Davis, he was preaching about the same passage, and he said, practically speaking, we, we really misunderstand what Jesus is talking about here. He's not talking about becoming best buddies and friends with the people who've abused you. He's not even saying associate with the people who have abused you and have been cruel to you and lied to you and betrayed you. He's not even saying you shouldn't try to avoid them. All he's saying is don't hate because hate closes all the doors and hate lasts forever. And how do you keep from hating? And that's the nut of the whole thing. How do we keep from hating when these things happen to us? And the advice given and Jesus mentions it in here. Pray for those who hurt you. And Father Cyprian said the same thing. Pray for them. Think about all the people who ever betrayed you, hurt you, mistreated you, abused you. And remember them in your prayers. Remember them in your prayers. Because if you are able to pray for someone who's been cruel and unkind to you, you can avoid them, dislike them, have nothing to do with them, but you cannot hate. You simply can't hate if you're praying for them. You can do all those other things, but you won't fall into hate. And if you don't fall into hate, you won't fall into despair. And that, I think, is a powerful lesson to have. It's not easy to do, but in reality, if we're able to pray for those who have hurt us in our lives, at least we keep the door open to God's love. Now, something else. Lent will soon be here. A week from this coming Wednesday. Not this coming Wednesday, but a week from this coming Wednesday. It's Ash Wednesday. And of course, we will have Mass in the morning with ashes distributed. And we will have Mass in the evening with ashes distributed. And ashes will be here all day for self-distribution. And the men's club will kick off their fish fries. All that. And the pierogi will be sold there too. And that will take place on Ash Wednesday and, of course, every Friday of Lent, including Good Friday. But what we have done in the past, before COVID, was have something really special to really kick off the Lenten season. And we're going to be doing that this year. Our religious education department has worked very, very hard. Kim Froud has put a lot of time and effort into this. And we are bringing something called Walk with the Saints. Now, of course, I'm sure some of you have checked in my Saint of the Day that I put on the website. If you haven't, it is going to take about two, two and a half minutes to watch it. <laughs> and there's a new one every day. So if you, if you just can't, if you can just pull yourself away from a commercial break, you can click your phone and get your Saint of the Day. It's up to you. Um, there's a new one every day. And, uh, well, we're bringing that along, that theme called Walk Among the Saints. Walk Among the Saints is put together by the Archdiocese of Detroit. 28 banners. And each of these banners represent a different saint. And every one of these banners, so I wrote my high-tech stuff here, has a QR code on it. A QR code is something that you use your phone. You click the code, and you can go then, on your phone, you'll be able to read all about that saint. We're also going to have old-fashioned paper booklets for children so that the kids can enjoy it, either color or draw or do some things about those very same saints. And the times that you're available to come and do it are all on the front page of today's paper. In addition to Walk Among the Saints, on the Friday after Ash Wednesday, March the 4th, not this coming Friday, but the following Friday, we are going to have, of course, First Friday devotions, which we have every First Friday, which begin immediately after morning Mass is over. 
We put out the monstrance and the blessed sacrament. We pray the rosary, a number of litanies, and then we conclude with the final blessing. Well, this coming First Friday, we will not conclude. We will keep the blessed sacrament on the altar all day. All day until about 6 o'clock. And then we will have uh, the divine praises and the final blessing, and then I will repose the sacrament into the tabernacle. Then following that, we will have our first stations of the cross. So that if you have any time during the day, or you want to come early for the fish fry, or you want to take a few minutes out after the fish fry, come on over to the church. Spend a little time with the Lord. Check out some of the saints. You might not want, you don't have time to do all 28, but do a couple. And then sit down and pray with the Lord in, on, on the altar. We think it's a beautiful way to be inspired by the lives of saints and to spend time with the Lord himself. A very good and holy way to begin the Lenten season. <laughs>